scout skills are extremely varied and run the gamut from cooking to tying knots to outdoor fitness. 180 scouts from five states have gathered virtually to test their mettle and to compete in six different competitions. From knots to packing to the ultimate camp food, there is plenty to win. Who will come out on top? Who will have the best campsite? Who will have the tastiest camp meal? Join us as we reveal the winners from the 2020 Twin Rivers Council Virtual Camporee. Hey everybody, it's Virtual Commissioner Will again, reporting to you from Camporee headquarters. I'm welcoming all the scouts and scouters to our big Saturday showcase where we're gonna see some lightning fast knots, find out who knows how to pack for an eight mile hike, experience some tasty outdoor cooking, and have awesome forts and cool campsites. So don't touch that dial everybody, and I'll see you all later on in the program. Hi Scouts, I'm Mr. Bikey. I'm an Assistant Scout Master at Troop 42 in Clifton Park. I'm here to present the results of our packing challenge for this camporee. We had a lot of entries. Thank you to everyone who took time to submit an entry and we'll go through the, uh, the results. First, let me say that the judging was based on were you prepared? That was the first thing we considered. That's the Scouts BSA motto, be prepared. Did you have enough of the right things? Did you have the 10 essentials with you on this outdoor hike? Did you have enough of them? Was everything shown in your submission picture and could I see it? I did my best to look at all the entries. I apologize, apologize if I missed anything, uh, but that's how we picked it. it. Was did you have enough of the 10 essentials shown and were they in your backpack? Also, did you include anything that was not one of the 10 essentials, but might have been important or needed? So what are the 10 essentials? The 10 essentials are listed in the Scouts BSA handbook. They are a pocket knife, rain gear, trail food, flashlight or a headlamp, extra clothing, first aid kit, sun protection, map and compass, matches or a fire starter, and water bottle filled with water. Why do we need all these things? Well, if you're going into the outdoors, you need to be prepared. What if you need these things for survival or for emergencies? What if you get injured? What if you get lost? What if the weather changes? Or what if your plans just have to change or you're forced to change them? That's why we bring these things at a minimum. In particular for this hike, did you start with enough water? Water was real important because it was a 75 degree day and the hike was gonna be all day long, up a mountain, a very steep mountain with a challenging course. Walking uphill on a hot day, you could be using as much as a liter of water per hour on some of those uphill parts. So you need to bring a lot of water with you or have a way to treat water that you would find in a stream along the way. Some of the scouts did pack all the water they needed. Other scouts started with less water, but had a way to treat it, which is great. And then some scouts did not bring enough water and did not have a way to get more. If your entry clearly showed all the 10 essentials and you appeared to have enough water for the whole trip, then we moved on to whose backpack was lightest. Consider hiking for eight hours straight. You want your backpack to be as light as possible. You don't wanna be carrying more weight than you have to, right? What I will say is that everybody did pack bug spray or bug netting. This is not one of the 10 essentials. Why is that? Well, bug spray is not always needed for survival, but in this particular case, I would call it very essential for this hike because of the black flies in the Adirondacks this time of year, as well as ticks. Good job on everybody. You all included the bug repellent. I'll also point out our heaviest uh, entry, honorable mention to Matthew from Troop 4042. His pack was the heaviest, but only because he brought all of his own water with him and a lot of gear, all the 10 essentials and plenty of it. 
Uh, his pack was 16 pounds. All right, let's move on to our top finishers. Third place goes to Izzy of Pack 81 with a weight of 11.4 pounds. Nice job, Izzy. Second place goes to a joint entry from Emily and Aaron of Troop 2063G with a weight of 5.5 pounds. Their entry had enough of all the essential gear, the 10 essentials, enough water to start, and a way to treat water. Great job. Finally, first place goes to Jamin of Pack 4024. Jammin's entry was 3.4 pounds plus another two pounds for water to start the hike. Uh, Jammin's entry then is a total of 5.4 pounds, just beating out our second place. Uh, and Jammin also had all the 10 essentials, enough water to start the hike, and a filtering system for getting more water during the hike. So congratulations to all of our entries. Thanks to everybody for submitting and doing your best to be prepared. Thank you. Welcome Twin Rivers Council Scouts to the Knot Challenge. My name is Peter Barkman. I am going to be the judge for the Knot Challenge. Uh, the knots are the Surgeon's Knot, two half hitches, bowline knot, and the Hunter's Knot. Uh, we have some great uh, honorable mentions that we'd like to, for you to take a look at. Uh, take a look at these videos and see what you think. Welcome back. Those knots were great. Thank you guys and girls for trying uh, to tie the best knots you can tie. Uh, right now, we'd like to introduce our third place finisher. Thanks for that, that was great. Now, we'd like to introduce our second place finisher. Great knots, let's see what they've got. Ready.
thank you for a great second place finish. And here we are with our first place finisher, ready to go. Let's see first place. Hey everybody, it's Virtual Commissioner Will here again to give you the results of the Ultimate Blanket Fort Contest. I'm here in my own fort right now. I've got some uh, places for all my friends to come and sit. I've got some cool lights up there. I've got my buddy over here hanging out with me. And because that's what forts are for, right? You have an Ultimate Blanket Fort so you can hang out with all your pals. So before we get to the top three, there are a few that I thought were just so really cool that we should just see those too. Okay, take a look at these. Weren't those some awesome forts? I had a really great time putting mine together, and I know you guys had a great time putting yours together too. So now let's get to the third place of our ultimate blanket fort competition. Take a look at this. I've been stuck inside so long, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. So I designed my fort around a, a style of Christmas so it has two stories. I can lay up top, sit down bottom. I have my Charlie Brown tree here. I've got lights along here. I can sit on the chairs if I want, and I hang out down here. This was a really, really hard competition for me to judge because so there were so many awesome, awesome creative en uh, entries. You guys all did an awesome job. But well, right now, I'm going to show you our second place the runner-up for the Ultimate Blanket Fort Contest. Here we go. This is Thomas's Magic Fort for the Ultimate Blanket Fort Contest. Inside of it, I have um, blankets, I have pillows, I have water, and uh, on the walls, I have some of the best magic cards in the game printed out. So, um, so I can have a little decoration in here. I have these over here because there's the Xbox right there. So yeah, that's really my fort. That was an awesome, really exciting, fun fort. I bet you had a really good time putting that together. Now, we've got the one that we've all been waiting for. The most ultimate, ultimate blanket fort of the 2020 Twin Rivers Council Virtual Campery. Ready? Here we go. Hi, welcome to a blanket fort. My name is Wyatt. My name is Olivia. And her name's Club. Yeah. And this is Molson. Our dog. <laughs> Our blanket fort has a shelf, a pillow shelf. And when you turn the lights off, <laughs> there's starlights all over the place. And we, we, have, we have little beds set up. We also up have in. an exit over there. How? And 
and some beds. And the eggs that you are coming into. Mm -hmm. And I'll say we have oh, two toys panda. for Molson to play with. I have pandas for me to sit with. And Livy has a unicorn blanket and some comfy pillows to help me <laughs> get comfort. <laughs> I want to say thanks to everybody for sending in all those cool entries. And I hope that you all continue to have a lot of fun with the rest of the campery and all these cool blanket forts. Keep scouting on, everybody. Hi, scouts and parents. Welcome to the Fitness Challenge Reveal. I'm Mr. Gersey with Troop 4246 in Clifton Park. We're chartered by the Clifton Park Elks. Especially in these times, it's important to stay physically active. I really appreciated the entries that we received. In third place, we have Caden G. Caden, I really liked your Rocky Balboa jump at the end of your video. In second place, we have Tazio H. Hi, I'm Tazio, and this I'm going to be showing you my fitness course today. First, we have the ladders. I'm going to put two feet in on each one. Then I'm going to grab the ball, go through these cones, put the ball down, do 20 jumping jacks, juggle, and then shoot on the ball. I liked how you explained your fitness course and ran through it and all the different parts of the body that you exercised. Nice job. And in first place, we have Arwen S. Arwen, you completely blew me away when you included parts of the Scout Law at stations in your fitness challenge. I especially liked Helpful, where you were quickly folding laundry. Hey, sorry. One more time. Hi, I'm Arwen. This is my little sister, Kenna. I will be explaining what she will be doing. This is my obstacle course. Ready? Go. So we walk through here, we'll crawl, and then we do the low crawl under the hammock. Zigzag through the cones. And then she'll go darts. Scout values, scout free. And all you need to do is try. You never get it on your first try. Now remember, the scout is trustworthy. Trustful. Don't forget, the scout is also helpful. Now, the scout is also clean. Leave no trace. Scout should always remember to have fun. Go on your camping trip. Great job to all the scouts. Thank you. Hi everybody, Virtual Commissioner Will here again, back with the results of our Ultimate Backyard Campsite Competition. 
I had such a great time looking at all these cool photos and videos of all of our entries. And I know that you all had a, put in a lot of good work and had a great time building them as well. I want to take a look at a few of the ones that I thought we wanted to make sure that everybody really got to see before we got to our top three winners. So everybody sit back and enjoy these. Those were a lot of fun campsites, and I hope everybody got a chance to spend the night in them at least once. So, before we go any further, let's get to our third place winner in the Ultimate Backyard Campsite Competition. Hang on tight, everybody, and take a look at this. That was an awesome campsite. It looked like a really fun place to spend the night. Now, when I get down to the top two, it's really hard for me to decide which is going to be first and which is going to be second because everybody puts so much great work into these. Do we look at themes? Do we look at comfort? Do we look at practicality? Do we look at the most scouty campsite? Do we look at the most fun campsite? It's really hard. But I want everybody to sit back and soak in all the hard work that was put in to our second place winner. Wasn't that an awesome campsite, everybody? Let's hear it for our second place winner. Now, I want everybody to hold on tight and sit back because here we are with that ultimate campsite of campsites, that backyard palace, the first place winner of the first ever Twin Rivers Council 2020 Virtual Spring Camporee. Congratulations. I wanna say thanks to everybody that entered this competition I'm sure we all learned a lot and we all had a really great time. I had a really tough time going through all those great uh, campsite ideas and configurations and all the different things people thought of to come up with the best way they want to do their own campsite. Remember all this stuff when we get back out camping again. And remember, keep scouting on. Have a great time, everybody. Hi scouts and parents, I'm Mr. Gersey. I'm here to do the cooking challenge reveal. Thank you scouts for all your submissions. We got a lot of great entries. This is a very difficult decision for me to make. There were about half entries were desserts and half were main dishes. So there'll be two categories for the reveal. In the dessert category in third place is Molly, Erin and Emily. I really liked your take on s'mores nachos. In second place is Kenna S. Your sugar cone packed with mint chocolate chips and fruit and marshmallows looks like an awesome dessert. And in first place is Chase W. Chase, your banana split with fruit had such awesome plate appeal and it held through even after cooking. That's a great job. Thank you. Now for the main dishes, in third place is Jam and D. I like the simplicity of your ham, pineapple, and cherry dish. I'm gonna try that on my next camp out. In second place is Mina S. Your use of homemade garlic knots, I think makes your dish look really super. And in first place, we have a tie. Theo H, I liked your all-in-one Cajun shrimp with corn and potato dish. It's awesome to have everything in one foil meal on a camp out. And Erwin S, putting jalapeno and pineapple 
in your salmon luau dish makes me think of trying jalapeno and pineapple in some of my future dishes too. Thanks to everybody who had entries. It's a great job and keep cooking. Weren't those some tasty dishes? I can't wait to try some of those out in my own backyard campsite, and you should too. I want to give a special shout out to all the judges that worked so hard to pick the winners this weekend. It was not an easy task. We had so many awesome entries. I also want to remind all the adult leaders who signed up for our leaders lunch. It's at 12 p.m. today, and you got the Zoom link when you registered, so check your emails so you can get into the meeting. Later on tonight, the Catan Lodge of the Order of the Arrow will be calling out all the new arrowmen for all of our chapters in the council. That'll be something very special to see. Right after that, they will also be leading us in the closing ceremonies for this week's Camp Array. I want to thank everybody for coming, and remember, keep scouting on.